I will only um, uh, talk about microbial lab cases and in fungi, mainly in basidiomycetes and some ice covid mycetes and in uh, bacteria, in prokaryotes, bacteria and archaea. This is a, two a picture where we show two plates uh, of Bacillus subtilis with one uh, colored in uh, brown, which is the uh, activity of the lactase on a, sub on a guaiacol substrate, which is oxidized and give, gives this type of color. So it is easily, if we, if we want to screen for microorganisms that produce lactases, it is very, very easy to, to do it. So in, 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 the, in the prokaryotes, the first lactases were, were, were discovered in the isospirulum lipoferum that was isolated from the root of some plants. And then many lactases are, after this uh, date, many lactases have been discovered in the, in the, in the bacterial uh, domain. Um, the well-known producers of lactases include gram-positive and gram-negative uh, bacteria, and also in some uh, alpha and gamma proteobacteria. Some uh, archaea also are able to produce lactases. Physiological role, uh, uh, as I, I, I presented in, in, uh, before, uh, lactases may, are mainly involved in methyl homeostasis, oxidation, sporulation, morphogenesis, and cell and spore pigmentation, and are linked to resistance to different stresses. Uh, also involved in uh, lignin modification, and this is very, uh, very new, recently suggested as only fungi are able to degrade um, uh, lignin. Uh, the uh, azospirulum uh, lactase is involved in cell pigmentation, and the coat A gene in bacillus, in the spore of bacillus, is uh, involved in the biosynthesis uh, of a brown spore pigment, which protect the spore against uh, UV radiation. The physical and biochemical properties of bacterial lactases, the protein is uh, uh, 32 to 100 80 kilodalton and occur as monomer, trimer, or tetramer. Uh, glycosylation in this is very uh, not well investigated, but some uh, researchers have found few carbohydrates linked to uh, these lactases. Uh, the bacterial phenol oxidase are active at high pH compared to fungi which are acidic and also are stable at high temperature. For example, uh, the pH optimum is 8.5 to 9 for ABTS and D DMP. Uh, was shown for cellular streptomyces lactases. Highest temperature optimum also was shown for uh, the MCOP from uh, pyrobaculum aerophilum and uh, 92 degrees for the uh, lactase from Thermos thermophilus. The lactase from Streptomyces epomea retained 100% of its activity at one molar NaCl and at page uh, 8.0. You will see that uh, compared to fungal lactases, bacterial lactases are more stable to pH, could work at, uh, P, uh, at alkaline pH 
high temperature and also at high concentration of uh, NaCl. And this is could be uh, um, advantage for uh, industrial applications. So bacterial lacases find many application in the decolorization of dyes, effluent treatment, degradation of toxic pollutants uh, in bioremediation, and also in the food industry for uh, wine and juice industry, and also in the pulp and paper uh, in the uh, We can use them as biosensor and also in the uh, lignin, paint, biofuel, organic and organic uh, synthesis. Now we will move to fungal lacases. And before we study the property of fungal lacases, we have to uh, have an idea about the substrate of fungi in the, in the, in the woods, in the, in the forest. So uh, fungi degrade lignin, uh, to, to degrade uh, the cellulose, they have to break down the lignin molecule that protect, um, that protect the, uh, this uh, cellulose. And for the, th that reason, they use a number of, uh, a number of enzymes, including Lacases, lignin peroxidases, manganese peroxidases, and versatile peroxidases. And they, for peroxidases, they have also the help of from accessory enzymes here that produce H2O2 for the heme peroxidases to, uh, to act and uh, degrade the lignin molecules. Um, in the forest, we can see several type of fungi, and they were classified as white rot fungi that degrade the lignin and they keep the cellulose uh, not degraded. And that's why we, we can see this white color of the uh, uh, of the uh, decayed wood. Instead, we can also find brown rot fungi or cubic rot fungi that degrade the cellulose but keep intact the uh, lignin molecules or uh, they degrade them but uh, slowly. So we we'll go back to uh, the lacase from fungi, and uh, this is a, a 3D structure of fungal lacase. That means versicolor, and this uh, three domain uh, protein here in red, blue, and uh, green. And you can see here the four copper atoms. And this is a uh, this is a, a UV uh, visible uh, spe spectrum of uh, the protein of lacase, and you can see that this protein absorbed at 600 nanometer, which is the uh, T1 yeah. center. which is a blue lacase. The active site you can see here contains four cup, atom, four cup atoms and uh, one is this uh, cup atoms is involved in the oxidation of the substrate while these three sites are involved in the oxid in the reduction of h2o to what the alignment of different uh, lacase proteins gives this um, this um, 
kind of um, uh, alignments and you can see that uh, some sites are very uh, conserved and these sites are the kappa bonding domains this black uh, these black sites are the kappa binding uh, domains and you can see here the histidine that is um, conserved so lacases oxidize substrates in two ways the first way is a direct oxidation and the second way when the um, redox potential of the substrate is higher than the enzyme then uh, lacases uses another strategy which are the uh, mediator these are organic molecules that are oxidized and these molecules um, oxidize the substrate so we, we use this uh, lacase mediator system for oxidizing for uh, of high uh, high redox potential molecules and in the in the uh, in the nature there are many natural uh, compounds that could play um, this role and we can uh, for example see here acetylserangone, syringic acid, mainly phenolic compounds that could uh, be found in lignin degradation products. And also we have some artificial uh, mediator that are used also in the uh, textile industry, for example, HBT or Tempo that are used uh, for the degradation of uh, for um, degradation of uh, dyes with high redox potential. Uh, some properties of biochemical properties of uh, fungal lacases, they are, as you can see here, they, are, they have a molecular weight of 43 to 383, depends on the number of uh, units. Uh, the temperature is 25 to 80 and you can see that the optimum pH is ranging from 2 to 5 the very acidic compared to um, bacterial lacase lacases are induced in by copper so we can uh, add copper in the growth medium and we can induce lacases and you can see that uh, the lacase protection increases uh, uh, four times to ten times uh, without then without uh, copper and we can see here that this uh, regulation is at the gene level and we can see here uh, that the RNA from lacases are uh, produced in big quantity uh, compared to the, to the culture without copper. And also we can see here at the uh, level of proteins. So uh, fungal lacases are used in many uh, applications, including textile. By fuel cell and by sensor, by remediation, food, uh, uh, pulp and paper industry, uh, organics synthesis, biofuel, cosmetics, paint, etc. I will give some example uh, for lacase applications, and some of them are uh, developed in our laboratory. Here, uh, something from uh, Nouveauzyme. The Denilite is a product commercialized by uh, Nouveauzyme. And this is uh, this uh, product, which is composed of lacase and other uh, ingredients. 
And this compound could give a different shade to uh, the denim of the genes, as you can see here. And this is uh, to, uh, to, and we work here at low temperature and without bleaching uh, agents. We use lacases also for the decolorization of uh, industrial or textile industry effluents that contain many dyes. Here we have uh, 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 tested different uh, dyes and we use uh, lacase producing fungi. And you can see here on the plates that uh, this fungi could degrade the dyes. And you can see um, that, for example, here, the uh, RB5 or the aniline blue or the RBBR dyes that they were completely decolorized by the fungi. And we can, when we go to the, um, uh, the culture and the, with the, the free lacase, we can see that uh, also that at the maximum absorbance, we can see a decrease in the, in the color and we can see it even uh, in, in the in the uh, in the cubes. Several factor affect like case decolorization of industrial dyes. For example, pH, dye structure, dye concentration, enzyme, uh, source of enzyme, enzyme concentration, redox mediator, also the presence, and also the enzyme state when used uh, free or immobilized. Uh, we also test the immobilization of uh, fungal biomass and also uh, enzymes that were immobilized. And we can see um, clear decolorization of the, of the dye. Uh, here we have to uh, <coughs> we have to say something which is decolorization that doesn't mean that the dye were uh, detoxified and we have to test if the dye was detoxified or, or not. Another application is the de degradation of uh, endocrine disruptor. So uh, endocrine disruptor are uh, molecules that mimic the uh, activity of some uh, hormones so they they can block or they can increase the activity of uh, some genes and they enter the uh, the food chain from different uh, sources for example, here the plants, fish, plastics used, pharmaceutical compounds, and personal care products. These all could contain endocrine disruptor. Uh, in our laboratory, we have tested the degradation of bisphenol A by fungal lacases. We produced lacase in solid state fermentation and we uh, test it on the uh, on this substrate on bisphenol a uh, gcms analysis showed that uh, bisphenol a was degraded and uh, some products uh, new products or new intermediate was um, produced uh, the second, um, the second uh, pollutant that we have uh, tested also is uh, olive meal wastewater. First of all, we test, we screened several fungi for the degradation of 
or we mill wastewater at different concentration here. And we can see that Coriolopsis gallica was the, the best strain for the degradation of uh, olive meal wastewater. Then we tested Coriolopsis gallica in solid media, and we can see that this fungi was able, able to decolorize this um, the olive meal wastewater. We uh, went to liquid culture and we showed that the fungi was able to remove phenols, to remove color, and to produce lacases in this uh, culture. HPLC analysis showed that, as you can see here in, in red, is the uh, crude uh, olive meal wastewater, and in blue is the uh, the substrate uh, after uh, treatment and you can see that many uh, phenols were removed after the treatment with the with the, uh, the fungi here is a fine analysis with hplc ms and we can see that uh, in this table that many phenolic compounds were completely removed after uh, after uh, growth of the fungi and lactase production. The uh, uh, phytotoxicity of, of uh, the treated and untreated olive meal wastewater was also tested. And we can see that, uh, uh, that the uh, treated here, uh, the treated uh, olive meal wastewater was not toxic. Here, uh, test in some tomato plants also, and we can see that uh, the control uh, plant is similar to that of the treated um, olive meal wastewater. Um, this is a new project that we are we are uh, involved in, and it is the biodegradation of antibiotics. As you as you can see here in this map, uh, Tunisia and Algeria are one of the countries that uh, uses or consume antibiotics uh, at a very high uh, level. Uh, in terms of uh, daily dose, daily dose, uh, daily dose, and uh, especially Tunisia and Turkey, and then in the second uh, place uh, Algeria, and this uh, high consumption of uh, antibi uh, antibiotic antibiotics could lead to the. Uh, um, antibiotics resistance in many uh, bacteria. Uh, lacases were uh, used for the degradation of several type of antibiotics from different families. And we can see that the lacase and the mediator were able to degrade most of uh, antibiotics. And here we have a graphical abstract from a, a paper that uh, the lacase from Bacillus subtilis uh, expressed in E. coli could also uh, degrade uh, uh, sulfonamide uh, antibiotics. Uh, finally, I would like to thank you for your attention and to thank uh all the people that uh, participated to this work uh, my students and also my collaborator from uh, spain maria jesus martinez uh, susana rodriguez coto and also from france professor eric croco and thank you for your attention Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Nesishi. Um, so you can stop uh, sharing your screen. Thank you very much.
uh, I think that we have a, a chat either in the YouTube uh, connection or even also in this meet uh, room. So uh, I propose to collect all the questions uh, for the final debate. So we will be more or less just on time with the scheduled uh, schedule. Mm -hmm. So uh, if everybody agrees, um, Professor uh, Ghana says also here, <laughs> okay, to this movement, I propose to move to the presentation of Professor Jawadi that we finally recover his sound and image. And uh, well, you can, you can start, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, do you hear me please? Okay. Uh, Dr. Nisreen, uh, you can help me in the slide or uh, how can I uh, share my slide? Okay, Professor Juredi. Oui. On the meantime, as you saw before, I will just show to avoid interruptions uh, a card like this one saying that there are five minutes left to the end of the presentation. And when we have two minutes left, I will show you the same card. Thank you. Uh. I can start? Yes, you can. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so first of all, uh, I would uh, like to apologize for this uh, technical problem and mistakes that happened in my PC. I uh, I'm, I'm talking uh, on my uh, smartphone. Uh, my name is uh, Bassem Jawedi. I'm a researcher and a full uh, professor in the Center of Biotechnology of SFAX. Uh, uh, also, uh, I would like to thank very much uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Professor uh, Nenshi, uh, the chairwoman for this uh, uh, scientific meeting uh, for inviting me uh, to this uh, seminar and for giving me the opportunity to uh, talk about uh, of one uh, uh, one of my uh, topic uh, on uh, microbial enzymes with industrial and environmental interest. I'm going to talk about uh, microbial uh, uh, dichlorizing and humic acid biodegradation peroxidases. Uh, thereby chemical properties and by technological opportunities for sustainable uh, green economy. Next slide, please. Uh, as uh, well, I'd just like to give uh, some uh, background about uh, uh, this uh, uh, oxido Reductation uh, are uh, uh, that catalyze uh, phenolic uh, substrates uh, in the presence of uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, to generate an oxidized product uh, uh, through an stable intermediate. The unique uh, uh, peroxidase is commercialized uh, enzyme. Uh, the, uh, is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, known as HRP, which uh, means uh, horse radish peroxidase. Uh, uh, its uh, three-dimensional uh, structure was uh, X-ray resolved. Uh, uh, this enzyme uh, is uh, uh, belonging to the family of uh, alpha-beta uh, type enzymes. Uh, and uh, is distinguished by the presence of this prosthetic group uh, named uh, M. Next slide. The presence or absence of uh, this M uh, is used as a criteria to uh, differentiate between uh, two categories of uh, peroxidases uh, 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 
using uh, this uh, PHCB basis uh, side from uh, Ira, uh, Toulouse, uh, France. Uh, from uh, this, there are two uh, categories of per peroxidases, the M peroxidases and non M peroxidases. Uh, there are uh, two main uh, family of uh, uh, peroxidases, which are animal peroxidases, and in contrast, the non animal uh, peroxidases. The first uh, class uh, is exclusively present in animal. However, the second non animal peroxidases is detected uh, in bacteria, uh, plant, fungi, and uh, plant, uh, fungi, and bacteria. The, uh, the last uh, family uh, is subdivided on, uh, sorry, is subdivided in three classes: class one, which is uh, exclusively uh, uh, present in containing intracellular peroxidases uh, of uh, bacterial origin. Uh, with catalase activity. Uh, however, the uh, second class uh, is secreted by uh, Basidu and Ascomycetes. Uh, I, uh, at the end of my talk, uh, I will come back to this class, which uh, can be updated by uh, our uh, research work on human acid peroxidases and the class three uh, presented only in plant. Next slide. Uh, the peroxidases have many uh, biotechnologic application as uh, in as bio, uh, used in uh, ELISA, for example, analysis as biological uh, markers uh, in food, for example, for the detection of uh, uh, of phenolic compound in uh, in meat, uh, uh, the uh, in text textile and paper industry also especially in dyeing and, uh, uh, and bleaching of wood, uh, of wood uh, pulp and uh, craft paper. The challenge here is uh, the, uh, it substitute uh, the chemical compound, uh, named sodium perborate, uh, which have the same, uh, uh, the same uh, uh, aim uh, that uh, decolorizing uh, the stains. This uh, role is, uh, uh, can be uh, uh, happen with uh, peroxidases or this uh, sodium perborate. Uh, also, uh, in environmental uh, peroxidases are used uh, to uh, biodegrade and uh, for the treatment of uh, linocellulosic biomasses and humic acids. Next, next uh, slide, please. The humic acids. Uh, uh, the, this lead, uh, leads me to to my next point concerning the role of these humic acids. Uh, as you know, the humic acids are very beneficial macromolecule for the soil. They, uh, they strengthen uh, its uh, structure and texture. Uh, also, they improve its fertility. Uh, they stimulate the growth of plants. And especially uh, this humic acid contribute to the remediation of polluted uh, soil with heavy metals, pesticides, and biopesticides. Uh, however, next slide, please. However, however, this uh, humic acid uh, become very harmful to the uh, human health when they, they are uh, especially present in the surface, in the water surface, uh, which uh, are intended for the protection of tap water or drinking water. Uh, uh, this uh, lead to the formation of uh, many complex, for example, humic acid heavy metals, or another complex, humic acid polychlorinate organic compounds. Uh, this complex generate uh, carcinogenic uh, derivatives such as 3-THM or 3 allo methane that are very dangerous for the health of the consumer and therefore for the uh, environment, for uh, pollution. Next slide, please. Uh, the biodegradation of uh, lignin or, uh, and humic acids uh, is uh, uh, due to, uh, uh, is uh, realized through uh, different uh, 
different uh, steps. The animation, please. Uh, the first step is the degradation of uh, uh, high molecular weights, followed by uh, the small or uh, low molecular weights, uh, and uh, finally, it's uh, total mineralization with uh, uh, microorganisms, especially uh, fungi uh, origin uh, uh, via. Uh, uh, via uh, lactases and uh, peroxidases. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, hence, uh, the, uh, we are interested in, uh, in, in this context uh, to uh, find uh, new strains uh, producing, uh, uh, the, the producing peroxidases from different uh, Tunisian and Algerian biotopes uh, uh, in the frame of uh, many collaboration with uh, the Algeria uh, through the multilateral uh, uh, or bilateral project uh, such as uh, uh, such as uh, for example uh, PH, uh, PHC Maghreb uh, or uh, uh, research development uh, Tinizu Algerian uh, project or recently the Labex uh, Tinizu Algerian with uh, many uh, university from uh, from Algeria, uh, followed by identification of the most interesting strains, uh, then uh, the optimization of uh, uh, peroxidase or enzyme production. Uh, and finally, we are interested to the uh, purification to the homogeneity and biochemical characterization of uh, the interested uh, peroxidases. Uh, the animation, please, for uh, different uh, biotechnological application especially for the formulation of uh, detergent, uh, laundry detergent, uh, for the textile uh, treatment of uh, uh, bi-effluent, and for the biodegradation of uh, lignin and the humic acid. Next, please. Uh, to do this, uh, many uh, uh, strains, uh, uh, fungal and uh, uh, bacteria, uh, are uh, screened, uh, isolated and screening uh, from different biotopes, uh, uh, from uh, the ruin of uh, uh, Roman ruin at Tipaza, uh, the strain uh, CX59, uh, from the Jardin de C at El Hama uh, in the Algeria's uh, Tramites Pipsens, uh, from uh, Saharian soil and from uh, uh, petroleum uh, reservoir or effluent. Uh, to uh, actinu uh, mycets. Next, please. Uh, recently, we are interested in, uh, in isolation of uh, 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 basidiomycetes and ascomycetes, uh, prametes and aspergillus uh, from uh, tenisium biotopes uh, belong to the collection tenisium de microorganism at the CBS. Next, please. Uh, two uh, peroxidases named uh, LIP uh, TC41 and MMP AAAN30 uh, 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 are uh, purified to homogeneity. Uh, uh, here, the gene encoding these two uh, peroxidases were uh, cloned, sequenced, and ex uh, recently expressed in uh, uh, yeast. Next, please. Recently, we uh, isolate a new uh, white, uh, new fungal uh, called Flebia radiata from uh, from uh, forest in Tiziuzu in Zimola. Uh, the purified enzyme was uh, characterized, and uh, it, uh, it, uh, it is. Uh, 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 use it for the decolorization of uh, textile dye. Next, please. Uh, we are uh, proceeded for uh, many criteria to select the best uh, strains that produce uh, peroxidases. Uh, from this uh, preliminary study, uh, many uh, strains are appeared to, uh, to uh, as the most interesting for uh, peroxidase uh, production in. Uh, solid and uh, liquid medium. Next, please. Uh, many uh, peroxidases uh, are purified uh, to homogeneity following uh, uh, many steps of uh, purification. 
uh, their uh, retain style value is uh, characterized and uh, determine their specific activity also. Next, please. Uh, the molecular weight, uh, there are uh, all these peptides are monomeric uh, proteins with the typical microbial uh, peptides structure. Next, please. Uh, here, we uh, uh, all these uh, peroxidases are uh, uh, peroxidases uh, belong to the M peroxidase family, especially because they uh, they are uh, strongly inhibited by uh, sodium uh, azide and uh, potassium cyanide. Here, we uh, we can conclude also that. Uh, Actinomycet peroxidases are endowed with the best catalytic efficiency than uh, horse radish peroxidase, the well known uh, commercial enzyme, but the basidiomycetes, especially the Y roy fungi uh, uh, peroxidase, have the best catalytic efficiency than actinomycet peroxidase and uh, HRP. Next, please. Next, please. Uh, the challenge here is uh, that the NH2 uh, uh, terminal amino acids of uh, the fourth humic acid peroxidases, uh, named uh, H. Uh, ah, here the application of uh, this uh, uh, microbial peroxidases uh, to substitute uh, this uh, inland detergent. Uh, a formulation composition to substitute the sodium uh, perborate uh, and uh, we succeed to incorporate these peroxidase in uh, Landry detergent uh, uh, named uh, Ecovax and Depex with uh, the formulation uh, with the per peroxidase as, as bleaching enzymes. Next, please. Here, uh, we uh, conduct the sequencing of the uh, NH2 terminal amino acids of uh, the fourth humic acid peroxidases uh, from actinomycetes that show homology with uh, basidiomycetes, uh, strong homology with basidiomycetes. From this uh, data, we uh, deduce that uh, we, uh, we, uh, we have proposed uh, to update this class two uh, that is uh, selected uh, with the basido and ascomycetes. We have updated this uh, class by uh, providing uh, a new super uh, family uh, called Actino uh, uh, HEP uh, one, two, uh, three, and four. Uh, here, our challenge is to update this class with humic acid uh, peroxidase from uh, uh, actinomycetes. Next, please. Uh, uh, a question that uh, remains uh, to be asked, what are this, the origin of these interesting biochemical properties of uh, uh, such enzymes from basidiomycetes and ascomycetes? Uh, next, please. Uh, uh, actually, we dispose uh, 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 with uh, 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 many candidacy of uh, peroxidases that are uh, uh, used for industrial purpose, especially in land detergent. Here, there are our candidacy uh, to be proposed uh, in textile, uh, also uh, treatment of stains of uh, textile support made in washing and dye colorizing and in biodegradation of these humic acids. Uh, with, uh, these uh, peroxidases are uh, for uh, industrial purpose, for the socioeconomic uh, uh, co collaborator. Uh, for this, next please, we, we move now to the, uh, the valorization of this enzyme uh, in the frame of uh, many uh, programs or many uh, uh, packages, especially the PAC Promise, uh, 
uh, with the, the next please uh, here we are, we are uh, since uh, uh, 2018 we we, we create uh, uh, our uh, startup called uh, biotech ecozyme uh, which is uh, uh, a biotechnology startup that developed a new and innovative technology for production of ecologic enzyme uh, for leather textile detergent and food industry uh, in the business incubator at the center of biotechnology of Sfax. and recently okay two okay uh, recently uh, here the, my team worked for this startup and uh, advisor border next please here, well, we also uh, recently create our uh, spin-off uh, on the in uh, to produce enzymes uh, in the uh, in our laboratory at the center of biotechnology at Sfax. Next, next, please. Here, with the co-founder, uh, with uh, my uh, postdoc uh, uh, in, uh, in in. Uh, uh, in the CBS, in coordination with many uh, uh, industrial uh, at Sfax and uh, uh, Monastir. Uh, thank you for your listening. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here today. Uh, I, I'd be glad to answer any question uh, at the end of my uh, talk. And uh, thank you again. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Professor Jawadi. <clears throat> and since we still have a few minutes before someone maybe expected coffee, tea, water break, I propose to collect questions uh, for you and Professor Meshishi and try to answer them or either right now or at the end in the round table that we will do a few minutes before midday. Uh, since uh, we need to wait for some questions uh, with respect to your presentation, we have through the YouTube uh, question and answering uh, space one question for Professor Meshishi from someone called Bushagit. And I please uh, apologize for the pronunciation. Uh, that refers to the use of uh, lacases to degrade. Uh, antibiotics. So if uh, Professor Meshishi can reconnect and answer the question, it will be a pleasure for the audience. What was the question? Yes, sorry. Uh, what's the use uh, of uh, uh, antibiotic uh, degradation by the lacases? Okay. So we... Uh... Lacases, uh, as you know, is a, an enzyme that degrade uh, molecules like uh, oxidize molecules like phenolics and uh, similar um, molecules. So, if the if the uh, if the molecule from the antibiotics is oxidized, then its activity is uh, uh, is abolished. Then we, we we could not detect any antibacterial uh, effect. I don't know. Okay, if, thank you very much. The, I don't know if, if this is the the. Uh, if I answer this question, so I, lacase act on the uh, antibiotic molecule and oxidize it, and then the oxidized molecule have no uh, antibacterial activity again. So it somehow will help us to reduce um, the the extractivity of antibiotics after treatment and release to the to the environment oh, okay uh, uh, I, I, as you you know maybe we can detect antibiotics in the uh, in the uh, effluents so when we consume 
is whole part of the uh, of the or part of the antibiotics will will be found in the urine and also and will be released to the uh, wastewater. Also, from pharmaceutical industry influence uh, animal wastewater also. Uh, <clears throat> all these antibiotics consumed will be found in the uh, in the wastewater, and black cases could be used. Uh, uh, something that I, I, I didn't uh, explain um, in my talk that uh, conventional treatment does not degrade antibiotic molecules. Conventional um, activate sludge or uh, other wastewater treatment uh, processes does not uh, degrade molecules uh, from uh, of antibiotics or on endocrine disrupts and this uh, molecules could pass the uh, wastewater uh, treatment plant and then uh, could reach the the uh, the environment that's why we we have to think about a process that uh, that could uh, purify water before before its release to the rivers or to the sea and yes yes totally totally uh, agree and um, if there is no more questions on the chat, uh, I will keep my question for Professor Jawadi and for you also, Professor Meshishi. Ah, sorry, there is one more question from Amina Muf. Amina. Mufakt. Sorry. Yes, please. Please activate. Activate the sound. Yeah, we have to activate yes. your um, activate your sound, Amina. Microphone. Yes. Okay. Donc, bonjour. Je, je m'excuse de m'exprimer en français. Donc, bonjour, Madame Lynchy, la présidente de ce webinaire. Bonjour, Monsieur le vice président, Monsieur Marc Liros, et bonjour pour uh, tous les participants. Et, uh, donc, uh, ma question à Monsieur Tahar Mouchichi. Uh, donc, uh, et uh, et comment donc? Comment utiliser les lacasses dans le domaine végétal, étant donné que vous avez dit que euh, sont utilisés pour restaurer les plantes, les végétaux. Euh, donc, comment utiliser ces, 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 ces protéines Et ma deuxième question euh, j'ai vu que la structure chimique euh, contient des, des sites d'absorption du cuivre. Est-ce que euh, on peut considérer que euh, ces protéines sont des métallothionines et pour euh, de ce fait, euh, d'où euh, elles peuvent euh, restaurer les milieux euh, ou bien euh, dépolluer les milieux, euh, les, les milieux et restaurer les, les milieux. C'est donc c'est mes deux petites questions. Euh, euh, je vais répondre en français. Euh, désolé, euh, Marc. Euh... C'est pas un problème pour moi. Merci. Okay. Donc. Je n'ai pas dit que euh, les plantes euh, utilisent les lacases. Ou, euh, certaines plantes produisent des lacases. Ce sont des, euh, les plantes... Euh, J'ai compris que les lacases, la donc, mm -hmm. euh, ils sont un rôle dans le domaine bio, de la biotechnologie végétale pour la restauration des, des plantes. Non, non, mais... mais et, et les plantes, euh, toutes les plantes euh, possèdent des phénols oxydases. Euh, si vous coupez une, une pomme, euh, elle va euh, former de, un, une coloration brune. C'est euh, l'action des phénols oxydases, par exemple. Ouais. Euh, si vous coupez un arbre, il va se... se il va produire euh, quelque chose euh, sous l'action de des la case pour euh, combler cette euh, fissure. Euh. 
Euh, en ce qui concerne le, le cuivre, euh, les lacases sont des protéines, euh, sont des métalloprotéines, mais pas des euh, métallo euh, euh, autre chose. Enzyme. Voilà. Ce sont des métalloprotéines où le site euh, actif contient quatre atomes de cuivre et euh, ce site actif, euh, le transfert d'électrons au niveau du site actif, au niveau de ces atomes de cuivre, c'est celui qui permet euh, l'activité de, de la lactase. J'ai bien compris. Merci pour votre réponse, monsieur. Oui, quand oui, oui. Well, thank you very much. Uh, merci beaucoup à tous les participants. Thank you very much to all uh, the participants. And I will propose you to keep the questions for the end of the round table, uh, a little bit before midday. So I suggest you all that keep you connected, even if you leave physically the connection, just keep the camera off, but connected. So we do not miss the connections, not the audio and other uh, parameters. Uh, Even uh, 10:45, so in 10 more or less minutes, to continue with the sessions. Uh, thank you very much to all of you.
Dr. Marc. Oh. <coughs> Donc, euh, dear participants, you are here. We should uh, maybe have a, a bell to call everybody into the room, okay. like uh, in the university. Okay. Uh, Dr. Marc B. Royce, we, we are the third uh, plenary conference. Your conference is intitulated Microbial Biotechnology and State of the Art. We have with address University Central of Catalonia, Spain, and we have. Yeah. We can begin your conference, Mr. Mark. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Salami. Uh, Salima, uh, I will share my screen. So, in theory, you are watching my screen, right? Yes, okay. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so uh, today I will just uh, make a, a broad and general overview in, in some aspects of uh, microbial biotechnology. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizing committee and especially uh, uh, Professor and Dr. Uh, Lenshi for, for all inviting me and giving me the opportunity to be with all of you. Uh, it's a pity that we are not presentially in, in Alger, uh, which uh, I still keep a nice memory when, when I was last time there uh, with some of, uh, of the members of the audience and the organizing committee. And if we move uh, on to the talk uh what is more clear right now and even more after the cop 26 meeting in glasgow it's the the fact that the climate change is uh, already a reality and we need to to act uh, somehow to preserve the world we are living now as a as a citizens uh, and in this sense the finite nature and the rapid uh, depletion of fossil fuels due to unsustainable global energy demands have, of course, uh, negatively impacted the environment, thus in generating and contributed to a um, speed up of this climate change. And we need to find and to seek for alternatives to the fossil fuel use uh, to produce uh, fuels and uh, energy sources more suitable more sustainable, more renewable, more obviously green, and uh, economically and equitable uh, worldwide. In this sense, the use of biomass is a good option that uh, will mitigate the uh, generation of green, uh, greenhouse gases, gases uh, and uh, generating an uh, inter uh, on energy independence uh thus improving this global economy and recirculation of, uh, of benefits worldwide uh this
since many years ago, so since centuries, as was the baking or the brewing, so the alcohol distillation processes. Uh, we have knowledge or uh, fossil records of baking and brewing as all well as uh, the early uh, appearance of uh, first stabilization of the human uh, in the world in uh, stable communities as small towns or small groups, families of uh, people living in a, in a small region. In this sense, uh, production of bread, beer has been uh, evolved towards uh, the last part of the 20th century in the production of antibiotics or even the first uh, genetically engineered protein that was uh, uh, insulin. It's true, and here you have a small and uh, simple overview recovered in, uh, from a nature review a uh, few years ago that shortly explained the history of the synthetic biology, so the use of chemical products that are derived from uh, microbes to produce a benefit, like uh, the first engineered E. coli, or the generation of uh, biofuel, or biofuels using amino acids uh, or the metabolism of E. coli. Uh, all these processes reflected in this image uh, allow us, uh, or allow for the improvement of the use of microbes in the recombinant or the homologous production of new or uh, old pharmaceutical products and biochemical ones. But this uh, needs to be improved and uh, moved forward to, to uh, a better production, more clean production, and uh, of course, a sustain, sustainable production of uh, any chemical product that we as humans will use in our common or uh, daily life. And this lets us to uh, keep in mind the, the uh, coloring and category and let's call uh, ages of uh, microbial bi biotechnology in the sense that red age and red um, sector of biotechnology that is on rules on the medical application the human health and other aspects and we have four more ones that are the green the blue the white and the yellow being the green and the blue together with the yellow the most important ones because deals with the uh, recirculation of uh, of products that has a uh, direct impact on uh, the global health of the earth, like uh, the, the pollution and the treatment of the environment or the use and production of uh, agro food or biomaterials. In this sense, uh, the generation or the uh, born of bioprocesses engineering um, reflects the needs for designing and development of new equipments and processes to uh, manufacture products from biological materials, but keeping in mind that the wastes should be also treated uh, biologically or uh, biosynthetically to reducing the waste uh, generation. In this sense, final products should be a benefit for us and will benefit agriculture, food, feed, uh, pharma pharmaceutical and nutraceutical chemical or products together with the polymer production and paper production. As an example, here below you have a, a sustainable beer factory recently constructed near the Barcelona city area in the northeast of Spain that uh, was designed and aimed to be quite close to the 0% waste uh, release. It's true that it's a big, big company and is a big, big factory, but they were quite close to this uh, completely neutral in pollution due to the wastes. It's true that it's not neutral in carbon release, but it's neutral on the waste uh, aspect. As a result of all bioprocesses engineering uh, is the mixture or is the, the conjunction of both biotechnology knowledge and biochemical engineering, thus generating a uh, interaction of different aspects of the science field and the economical field that will hopefully produce a better and sustainable uh, 
chemist uh, industry and uh, chemical products. Such uh, bio process engineering relates on the fact of um, the use of biological catalyzers that can be native. So those that are uh, naturally uh, performing a chemical reaction of interest or some that are modified, chemically modified, uh, using different uh, microbial or biotechnological uh, approaches that will allow us to generate some chemical reactions from the feedstocks to produce either biofuels, biomaterials or biochemicals from a, a perspective of uh, reducing the contamination to the environment. In this sense, all uh, bioproducts generated in the field of energy, chemicals, uh, food, materials or healthcare uh, need to be generated by biotools. It's uh, it uh, the use of microbial self wells of fuel well cells, engineered uh, microorganisms, either yeast or bacteria, uh, the production of uh, biological increased production, sorry, of cellulases for cotton aging, aging or new tissues production, and the use of biosensor or diagnostic kits in the healthcare system. And in, with respect to these two last aspects, I will, at the end of my presentation, uh, show uh, one or two slides uh, showing what's coming next in the in the next coming years in this field. Uh, it's true that bioprocess engineering might allow us to move toward a circular economy to fight or to avoid the uh, system we are living right now, which is based on crude oil or fossil fuels consumption. It's true that probably the main part of the audience uh, are based on countries that relies their economy relies on the uh, use and sell of um, these fossil fuels but it's true that the environment needs a change and the earth needs a change so we can imagine uh, uh, an integrative uh, bio refinery where the chemicals the biofuels food uh, biomaterials and energy produced uh, came from uh, renewable bio uh, biological feedstocks, that means biomass. It's true that, uh, for example, uh, countries located in a desert environment or more heated environment, even worse in the next coming years, if we do not uh, slow down the increase on temperature and the global warming, we will not live in a forest country. Spain can be a desert so uh, we need to not imagine the use of uh, forest as a biomaterial but trying to imagine the use of uh, microbes to generate such um, raw material for the refineries to produce biofuels or similars uh, imagine a close carbon balance with an energy uh, input probably directly or indirectly from the sun for a sustainable chemical uh, production. Uh, this uh, biotransformation, it's true that has clear advantages and even more uh, thinking on the fact that our world is turning towards this um, need of renewable, uh, renewable uh, chemical sources. And it's true that uh, the top 10 chemical companies that are the big tech in in this slide are moving towards uh, chemically uh, biological products and the use of a, a more clean uh, biochemistry uh, or more green biochemistry specifically uh, and are focusing and investing money in such uh, new fields because these new fields this this bio bio based economy will move or I expect, or I would like to dream on the move towards this uh, side of the world instead of keeping working on crude oil production. It's true that we have these advantages like the reduction of energy consumption, the reduction of the recalcitrant residues, the CO2 production will decrease, 
and the consumption of water also. And this produce uh, clear benefits in the environment and at the end in the economical side. But it's true that all crude oil or fossil fuel industry has more uh, years of optimization and development. So it's more robust right now. But we need to impulse the, the biotech industry to not being the younger children of the family, but becoming the teenager or even the young adult uh, of the industry on the chemical side. So need to equilibrate the productivity and the outcomes in this uh, kind of factories or industry, trying to lower in the cost. That means investing more money in research and development and trying to induce and produce a high profit uh, over the distinct applications where uh, the bioprocess engineering is being involved. In this sense, one of the examples, here you have the uh, consolidated bioprocessing of bioethanol from uh, molecularly engineered uh, microorganisms uh, in order to produce bioethanol from cellulose uh, production, the uh, hydrolysis of the cellulose and the fermentation uh, conducted by one single organism so all packet in a small uh, bacteria or yeast uh, <clears throat> or algae that will uh, produce a high efficient uh, biofuel that will help to reduce the cost and the use of um, uh, fossil fuels. This is a, a step forward in chemical uh, engineering and need to be performed by a microbe that will use its own enzymes to produce these uh, reactions, not distinct chemical reactions uh, conducted in different um, envelopes, let's say. Uh, so trying to um, reduce also the costs of this kind of chemistry or chemical processes. We can also use uh, microbes with uh, uh, engineered uh, genomes to produce recombinant proteins. Uh, then these proteins, these enzymes, will uh, be able to be selected and uh, isolated to be used in the uh, chemical factory to produce uh, any kind of product uh, imaginated from this um, recombinant protein. This is a clear advantage because we are not using chemical products in a big tanks. Instead, we are using uh, biological fermentation tanks that will allow the growth of microbes from the eukaryotic or the prokaryotic uh, side of the biological domains, increasing the productivity and the efficiency of these recombinant proteins and reducing the costs of the global production of um, biofuels, for example. We can also use uh, engineering of the DNA, not the final protein, uh, which will allow the, this genetic modification and uh, this protein production to be done exclusively by uh, one single uh, microbe, which are then called cell factories. If we imagine this kind of cell factories being used in microbial biotechnology, uh, not only for the production of biofuels, uh, and we focus a little bit on uh, something more applied and more uh, biological or biomedical. Uh, in the last five years, we have been uh, hearing and uh, observing an increase in the generation of medical and clinical device, devices uh, in the manner of wearables that we call them. That means that we wear in our clothes in our system uh, or in our body, uh, some kind of chemical uh, small uh, apparels that will inform we, the clinicals, or our smartphone or our smartwatch uh, with respect to some chemical or processes or reactions that we have in our body, like an increase of body tension, uh, sugar level in our blood, or uh, our capacity to uh, generate some uh, amino acids or some uh, acids in our mouth after uh, eating some chewing gums. But 
this is not only uh, one of the objectives of the biotechnology, so produce something from directly the human being uh, benefit and health, but we can also increase the uh, production and the spread breeding uh, of some seeds in order to increase the uh, production of some vegetables worldwide with some chemical or some, uh, sorry, some uh, microbiological uh, modification using, for example, the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, genetic engineering system. And here you have an example for the uh, production of some uh, uh, rices or some uh, seeds of, um, uh, I forgot the name in, in English, maize, sorry, uh, in order to, um, produce uh, more uh, bread or more uh, flour uh, for low uh, incoming countries. And the last but not the least, uh, imagine, and as you can see the publication, it just came out from the OWEN, is the uh, first studies in order to produce a spread, a speed breeding system in order uh, to be able to cultivate potatoes in uh, future um, colonization of a planet uh, or a space shuttle, uh, as you can see, sorry, in the lower part of the image here on the right down corner, where we will be able to try to produce plants or growing plants, in fact, out in the space without uh, too much influence of water and uh, sun. Um, as you can see in my last slide, which is this one, uh, there are still uh, plenty of room to investigate new microbial proxies, since we only know uh, roughly 10% of the microbial diversity out there. And there are then more than 90% of new chemical products, new chemical reactions produced by uh, microbes, especially bacteria. So we have some unknown uh, cell uh, factories that can produce something more sustainable uh, for the world that is waiting us tomorrow. That I hope that will be of less uh, carbon content and with uh, not that high increase in temperature as we have been generating over the last couple of 40, 80 years. And with all this, I would like to thank you all for your attention and the organizers. Since we are on time, I hope uh, we can take questions right now or leave them for the last uh, roundtable session. And I will just finish in um, saying uh, a word of memory for Professor Pierre Servet, who has been uh, with us until recently over the last years, and it was expected to be present in this, in this meeting. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. You have given a very interesting overview on microbial biotechnology. You have highlighted the concept of climate protection and economic, ecologic aspect of this biotechnology. So uh, we leave the debate uh, after uh, the last presentation. Uh, I come and introduce uh, Dr. Uh, for before the plenary conference, Dr. Akmusi Siham, with the conference intitulated Alufilic Archaea, an important group of extremophiles with promising contribution in biotechnology and the environment. Uh, Dr. Akmoussi, you are here? Oui, oui, Madame Dana. Merci. Merci, je suis là. Donc, Donc euh, euh, vous allez présenter en français. J'espère que ça ne va pas faire de soucis pour euh, les autres collègues. Donc, euh, on s'excuse, Marc. Euh, je pense que vous comprenez déjà le, le français avec le. Alors, vous avez la parole, Dr. Akmoussi. Merci, Madame Gana. Donc, euh, je vais partager mon écran. C'est bon? Vous arrivez à voir? C'est bon? Oui, 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 je t'en prie. Merci. 
Donc, je tiens à remercier euh, Madame la Présidente, Dr Lenchi, et le vice-président Marc Leros euh, de m'avoir donné l'opportunité de présenter un des grands taxes euh, abordés dans notre laboratoire, qui est le laboratoire BEMA Bioinformatique, Microbiologie Appliquée et Biomolécules. Euh, je me présente, je suis Madame Akmoussi Tomi Sihan, enseignante chercheur à l'Université de Boumerdes. Euh, durant ma présentation, je vais vous résumer nos travaux de recherche sur les archéalophiles, qui est un groupe important d'extrémophiles, avec une contribution prometteuse en biotechnologie et l'environnement. La Terre possède un grand nombre d'écosystèmes très divers, alliant plusieurs paramètres. Euh, Est-ce que vous arrivez à voir les diapos, s'il vous plaît il faut, euh, il faut ajouter le mode de plein écran. C'est ça. Essayez d'afficher en plein écran, s'il vous plaît. En plein écran. Maintenant voilà, bon. Non, non, toujours pas. C'est en, en diaporama. Ça passe pas C'est ok. Passez au mode diapo, si c'est possible. Passez au mode diapo. Est-ce que ça passe C'est bon vous arrivez à voir la deuxième diapo. C'est bien, non C'est bon Donc, je dis euh, que la Terre possède un grand nombre d'écosystèmes très divers, alliant plusieurs paramètres de chimie, dont certains sont extrêmes. Par exemple, on a les extrêmes au fil à haute température et à, et à haute pression, tels que les cheminées hydrothermales, euh, de pH extrême, euh, tels que les solfatars, et de de salinité extrême aussi, telle que la mer morte. Donc, ces, ces, ces écosystèmes sont souvent colonisés par des organismes qui sont dits extrémophiles. Et bien sûr, ces derniers sont adaptés à ces conditions physico-chimiques qui sont particulières. Donc, on peut dire qu'un extrémophile est un organisme vivant dans un milieu extrême. Quand je dis milieu extrême, c'est-à-dire que c'est un milieu qui est hostile à l'homme où toute vie euh, paraissait impossible. Les micro-organismes extrémophiles sont euh, classés en fonction des environnements extrêmes dans lesquels ils se développent. Donc, on peut ainsi, euh, ainsi euh, les caractériser par euh, les thermophiles. Donc, c'est des micro-organismes qui supportent des hautes températures. Les piézophiles, euh, c'est des organismes qui supportent des hautes pressions. Acidophiles, des pH acides. Allophiles, de forte salinité. Et euh, alcalophiles pour les pH alcalin. L'étude de la biodiversité de ces, environnements extrêmes, de ces environnements extrêmes a permis de mettre en évidence la présence d'organismes appartenant aux trois domaines de la vie, donc à savoir les bactéries, les eucaryotes et les archées. La majorité de nos travaux de recherche sont concentrés sur la biodiversité microbienne des écosystèmes salins et leur application en biotechnologie. Dans trois équipes dans notre laboratoire, qui sont bioinformatique structurelle et drug design, métagénomique et biomathématique, microbiologie appliquée et, euh, et moléculaire. Donc, ces trois équipes euh, s'intéressent à ces milieux extrêmes qui sont caractérisés par une forte salinité, donc allant parfois jusqu'à la saturation, et ces derniers abritent des micro-organismes qui sont dits allophiles extrêmes et qui présentent un potentiel de biosynthèse d'enzymes spécifiques et de substances bioactives telles que les biosurfactants qui, qui ont diverses applications biotechnologiques. Telle application des hydrolases allothermophiles en détergence. Donc, ces derniers sont utilisés dans la lessive euh, qui fragmente les sueurs organiques insolubles dans l'eau en, parti, en particules infimes qui sont éliminées par la suite avec l'eau de lavage. Bien que l'on connaisse euh, des milliers de types d'enzymes, euh, aujourd'hui, quelques-unes d'entre elles entrent dans la composition des produits de lessive. Ce sont principalement les alpha-amylases, donc qui, euh, qui éliminent les résidus d'amidon, euh, les protéases qui éliminent euh, les taches de sang, les cellulases qui, éclaircent, qui, qui adoucissent le tissu, et enfin les lipases qui, se, qui éliminent les taches de graisse sur le textile. 
ces enzymes, ces enzymes, notamment la lipase, sont utilisées comme additifs en détergent. Un exemple, donc là je vais vous donner un exemple de, de lipase de Novozyme qui ont été principalement développées pour éliminer les taches de graisse sur le texte. Novozyme's lipases have specifically been developed to remove greasy stains from textiles. Lipid stains are buried deep within textile fibers, making them difficult to remove. Detergents contain surfactants, which form micelles in water. Lipid stains can be efficiently removed by surfactant micelles and lipase enzymes. Upon contact with a layer of lipid molecules, the lipase adopts a specific orientation, which leads to exposure of the active site. Here, lipid molecules are cleaved into fatty acids, diglycerides, and monoglycerides. The concerted action of millions of lipases facilitates easy solubilization of cleaved lipids by the surfactant micelles. This combination of enzymes and detergent efficiently removes the lipid stain to achieve deep cleaning results. Comme ça a été démontré, les enzymes elles-mêmes ne subissent aucune transformation chimique lors de la dégradation des liaisons macromoléculaires, ce qui signifie qu'une enzyme peut provoquer une, réa une réaction de façon très répétitive. Donc, avant que son activité ne cesse vers la fin du, du, du programme du lavage, euh, les enzymes peuvent être utilisées très euh, parcimonieusement, ce qui permet de réduire euh, la quantité nécessaire euh, de produits de lessive en autre, euh, elle aide aussi à, à économiser l'énergie de l'eau car elles sont déjà très efficaces à basse température. En conséquence, elle peut euh, renoncer au pré-lavage ainsi que température de lavage qui est très élevée. Notre étude euh, s'est axée sur la, pro, la purification et la caractérisation biochimique d'une nouvelle lipase qui est produite par, euh, et, par une archée allophile qui est Allophérax méditerranée, d'intérêt biotechnologique dans la détergence. Donc, la caractérisation de cette lipase, de cette lipase nommée HML, qui est produite par la souche Allophérax méditerranée, a montré que l'optimum de production de lipase est obtenu avec 50 unités par amène après 72 heures d'incubation à 150 RPM, avec 15 de NACL et de PH7 et à 40 degrés Celsius de température. La caractérisation de l'extrait lépolitique pur montre que le pH optimum est, est de température est de 7 et de 60 degrés Celsius. Euh, L'enzyme euh, montre que le calcium à 2 millimolaires améliore considérablement euh, son activité. Elle est thermoactive et thermostable. Euh, cet archée allophile aussi produit une seule dépasse monomérique de masse moléculaire qui est de 45 kg d'alton déterminée par SDS page, puis euh, confirmée par l'analyse spectrométrique de masse. Euh, la, la lipase a montré une activité spécifique plus élevée sur les triacides glycérols avec les acides gras à longue chaîne, ce qui indique que notre lipase est une vraie lipase. Cette enzyme était complètement inhibée par le PMSF et le DFP, ce qui suggère qu'elle peut appartenir à la famille des lipases à série. La comparaison des paramètres cinétiques de, de notre lipase nommée HML avec son homologue commercial lipolase a, a indiqué que les deux enzymes adoptent une cinétique mycalienne classique. Euh, cependant, l'efficacité catalytique enregistrée pour notre enzyme est plus importante que celle enregistrée pour l'enzyme industrielle. Euh, ce résultat suggère que le potentiel de notre enzyme pour une utilisation possible dans diverses applications biotechnologiques et industrielles. L'étude de l'effet des solvants organiques sur la stabilité de notre euh, enzyme euh, et l'épolase ont montré un effet stimulant dans la majorité des solvants organiques hydrophiles, y compris l'éthanol et le méthanol. Plus intéressant, 
euh, la lipase présente également une stabilité considérable en présence de solvants organiques et de euh, Également une stabilité remarquable par rapport euh, à l'enzyme commerciale lipolase, une présence de divers solvants organiques à 25%. Ce résultat indique que notre lipase présente d'excellentes caractéristiques pour la formulation de l'agent. Euh, L'étude de l'influence de certains additifs détergents sur euh, la stabilité de l'enzyme montre que la lipase euh, HML présente une stabilité remarquable par rapport à la lipolase commerciale vis-à-vis -vis des agents tensioactifs noyoniques tels que euh, le, X, le triton X100, le tuine 20-60-80 et le SDS. Aussi la, lipase, aussi, la lipase est stable et compatible avec les détergents à lessive. Euh, liquide et solide. En effet, en présence de détergents tels que Dipax, Om, euh, Omnibianco, Glass, Easy Escape et Nadif, euh, leur activité résiduelle était de 100%, alors que la lipolase avait perdu plus de 20% de son activité initiale après une pré-incubation avec les mêmes détergents. De plus, l'ajout de la lipolase euh, à la solution détergente améliore les performances de détergents ESIS dans le sens d'une meilleure élimination des taches huileuses. Euh, notre lipase HML de, euh, issu de, de l'arché allophile Allofarax méditerranée semble être intéressante et elle pourrait être utilisée dans des applications biotechnologiques comme euh, bioadditifs dans les détergents liquides et solides et biocatalyseurs en synthèse peptidique. En parallèle, nous nous sommes également intéressés à la caractérisation des tanas euh, allothermophiles, euh, produite toujours par la même souche qui est Allopherax méditerranée, qui a montré une activité tanasique très positive sur une culture contenant des margines comme euh, inducteur. Euh, on sait que les rejets des margines constituent actuellement un problème euh, environnemental majeur. Euh, qui n'ont jusqu'à présent euh, peu de valeur économique en Algérie. Donc, le problème fondamental rencontré lors de l'application des différents procédés de traitement des margines, c'est la hausse des charges financières. C'est ainsi que notre étude euh, s'est orientée vers l'usage de la via biologique qui exploite la flexibilité métabolique euh, de nos souches allophiles extrêmes qui sont adaptées à la dégradation des composés phénoliques et lipidiques Bien sûr, ce type de traitement des margines euh, présente, présente des retombées économiques sur le coût de traitement. L'analyse euh, de ces résultats montre qu'en absence de micro-organismes, c'est-à-dire en absence de notre euh, souche archée allophile qui est allophaxine méditerranée, les composés phénoliques ne subissent pas, ne subissent pas ne subissent pas de dégradation chimique. Cependant, le taux d'abattement euh, des composés phénoliques est enregistré au 20e jour avec un taux de euh, 83,55%. La biodégradation pourrait s'expliquer par la capacité métabolique de Allopherax euh, méditerranée à dégrader séquentiellement les noyaux aromatiques des composés phénoliques. Le suivi de la production, le suivi de, la production euh, de la tanase par Allopherax en fonction du temps évolue de façon concomitante avec la croissance bactérienne et atteint son maximum d'activité après quatre jours de fermentation. La caractérisation des propriétés de la tanase dans l'extrait enzymatique brut montre que notre tanase présente une activité dans une gamme de température allant de 30 à 70 avec un optimum d'activité à 50 degrés Celsius et un optimum de pH à 6, donc légèrement acide. L'enzyme tanase présente un, un maximum d'activité en présence de 3 à 4 molaires de NACL. Toutefois, l'enzyme garde son activité même en absence de sel dans le milieu réactionnel. C'est un résultat qui est rarement retrouvé chez les protéines allophiles extrêmes. Euh, L'activité... Euh, n'a pas été significativement influencé par euh, des ions, par les ions, par les métaux lourds, pardon. Cependant, son activité a été complètement inhibée 
par la même concentration en ions de, de CO et de FE. Euh, des activités relativement réduites ont été détectées aussi après addition de, de 5 millimolaires du plan et euh, d'argent. Le traitement des effets euh, réalisé par Aloferax Méditerranée montre que cette... Euh, montre que cette souche présente une aptitude à dégrader les composés euh, phénoliques. Ainsi, ces efflux ne, ne peuvent être considérés comme une source préjudice pour l'environnement, mais un milieu de culture stable et facilement exploitable. Ces souches euh, allophiles pourraient être considérées comme, une, comme de bons candidats pour la biorémédiation des environnements salins contaminés par les margines, ce qui permettrait par conséquent non seulement de limiter les coûts de traitement de ces zones pour lui, mais aussi une meilleure efficacité et durabilité de ces procédés de, 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 dans les conditions jugées extrêmes. Euh, par ailleurs, dans un autre axe de recherche aussi, nous nous sommes intéressés à la bioremédiation des efflux des eaux urbaines et des activités industrielles telles que les plateformes offshore, pétrolières offshore dans les bouts de fourrage. Nous, on sait que les environnements et personnels, comme tous les autres écosystèmes, peuvent être affectés par la pollution, à savoir les hydrocarbures aromatiques et cycliques et ses dérivés. La bioremédiation de ces milieux contaminés par les micro-organismes conventionnels non extrêmes n'est pas valable en raison de leur incapacité à transformer efficacement les polluants organiques à haute salinité. Étant donné que les micro-organismes allophiles sont métaboliquement plus adaptés, à, à ces concentrations élevées de sel, donc ils sont considérés comme des candidats appropriés et surtout efficaces pour la remédiation, la, la bioremédiation de ces, de ces environnements hypersales. La bioremédiation des hydrocarbures aromatiques dans les conditions aérobies est réalisée par les micro-organismes possédant des systèmes enzymatiques différents, tels que les dioexygénases. Selon le type de réaction qu'elle catalyse, euh, il existe deux types de dioxygénase. On a l'intradiol dioxygénase lorsque la fission elle, se fait en ortho, c'est-à-dire une copeau euh, en intradiol. Donc c'est le catécol 1,2 dioxygénase. Euh, et on a l'extradiol euh, dioxygénase pour une fission en méthane, c'est-à-dire une coupure en extradiol. Donc, le catécol 2-3 dioxygénase. Cela permettra l'ouverture du cycle aromatique, ce qui entraînera sa dégradation complète. Par ailleurs, euh, une des caractéristiques permettant l'assimilation des hydrocarbures est la présence de biosurfactants dans les sites pollués. Donc, les biosurfactants euh, peuvent être définis comme étant des composés biologiquement amphiphiles capables de diminuer les tensions superficielles. Elle favorise euh, l'humidification, la solubilisation et l'émulsion des composés organiques. Dans le cas de récupération améliorée euh, du pétrole, par exemple, l'addition de biosurfactants augmente la concentration des composés hydrophobes dans la phase aqueuse par solubilisation ou la émulsification. Donc, elle augmente la surface de contact des composés hydrophobes. Plusieurs euh, souches de nos allophiles extrêmes ont montré la capacité très intéressante pour la dégradation des hydrocarbures. Euh, la recherche de l'activité enzymatique spécifique des enzymes clés liées à la biodégradation des hydrocarbures aromatiques, à savoir le catécol et le protoacatécoate euh, dioxygénase, dans le mode de fermentation euh, de l'arché euh, allophile qui est euh, alloarcula. SP, D21, euh, en présence du phénol comme inducteur, a révélé que la présence du catécol N2-dioxygénase euh, avait une très bonne croissance cellulaire. Donc, ces enzymes ont permis euh, la dégradation totale du phénol, euh, estimée par la méthode spectrophotométrique. Le catécol 1,2-dioxygénase est actif dans une large gamme de pH et de température euh, avec un optimum d'activité qui est obtenu à pH 7 et euh, température 40 degrés Celsius, alors qu'elle présente une activité maximale jusqu'à une concentration de 2,5 molaires de NACL. Euh, 
Donc, au-delà des 3,5 molaires, l'activité enzymatique d'Ale Arcula décroît considérablement. Bien que les enzymes du groupe allophilé extrême nécessitent de fortes concentrations en NACL pour être actives, d'après la littérature, euh, peu d'enzymes euh, peuvent fonctionner euh, en absence de NACL. Euh, cette biodégradation, bien sûr, est accompagnée aussi par la production des biosurfactants euh, qui est estimé par la baisse de la tension superficielle dans les milieux de culture. Euh, je remercie euh, les co-auteurs et leurs contributions respectives, ainsi que pour les discussions enrichissantes que nous avons eues sur, sur les différents projets réalisés. Euh, les études présentées restent à l'échelle laboratoire, mais nous avons lancé plusieurs projets qui sont en cours de réalisation et bien sûr les résultats de ces travaux de recherche ouvrent des perspectives à de nouvelles collaborations afin de mener des études plus poussées sur plusieurs aspects. Et je vous remercie pour votre attention. Merci Dr Apoussi pour euh, votre conférence euh, très étudiée. Donc euh, nous avons juste un imprévu, une, une acceptation une conférence qu'on a, qu a dû ajouter après, euh, après avoir été contacté. Bon, Marc n'est pas très content, mais bon, euh, je ne sais pas si la présidente le permet. Alors, je vous donne la parole, madame la présidente. Bien évidemment, madame Ghana. Et, euh, monsieur Boulhi, le bienvenu. Boulhi. <rire> Donc c'est Brahim Belhi. Bienvenue, désolé. Brahim Belhi, c'est un joli. Pas, 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 pas le, le, le football. Là. Oui. Donc Brahim Belhi est un jeune étudiant, euh, masterant, euh, que nous avons euh, sollicité euh, pour un encouragement, parce que nous encourageons beaucoup les étudiants et ça va leur donner beaucoup de courage et d'initiative pour se lancer dans la recherche. Et puis c'est un sujet d'actualité. Euh, concernant la crise sanitaire au COVID-19. Donc, euh, il va nous présenter sa conférence intitulée « Incidico Screening of Plants Derived Naturaceutical as Potential Target for Inhibition of SARS-CoV-2 Emerging Variant of Cancer ». Donc, c'est un, un étudiant du professeur euh, professeur euh, Amélie, professeur Amélie, donc professeur Amélie, euh, donc je, je l'invite à se présenter et aussi euh, d'être très succincte, s'il vous plaît. Allez, merci. Bonjour, est-ce que vous arrivez à m'entendre Oui, très bien. Très bien. Donc je vais partager l'écran. Est-ce que vous arrivez à voir mon écran Parfait. Parfait. Donc, euh, bonjour tout le monde. Good. Hello everyone, welcome monsieur, to our presentation. Monsieur Belfi, une seconde s'il vous plaît. Donc, euh, oui. j'invite monsieur Marc Liros de présider cette... de, de terminer la modération parce que je dois vous laisser, j'ai un, un petit empêchement. Alors, bon euh, vous... Merci, c'est pas un problème pour moi pour faire ça. Allons-y, voilà. Merci beaucoup, Marc. Merci à tous. À tout de suite. Je peux aller? Oui, oui, oui s'il te plaît, yeah. tu peux y aller. D'accord, très bien. Donc, uh, hello everyone, welcome to our presentation. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Belhi and I have a background in biotechnology and molecular pathologies. And uh, I'm here today to share with you the highlights of our latest research which uh, should appear shortly afterwards. And uh, we will submit it afterwards to a uh, preprint. So it will be available. And uh, I'll begin. So it's titled In Silico Screening of Plant Derived Nutraceuticals as Potential Target for Inhibition of SARS-CoV-2 and its Emerging Variants of Concern. I'll begin by putting you in context with COVID-19 pandemic 101 facts. So um, the, these facts are clearly obvious by now. Uh, 
SARS-CoV-2 is of the family of beta coronaviruses. Uh, it has the genome of a length of 30 kilobases. It has an R0 uh, of 2 to 4 percent. This is regarding the Wuhan uh, strain. The the R0 unfortunately has increased with the with uh, the emerging variants. It can go up to 8, 9 for the Delta variant, which is a concern. Uh, it has also a Dublin rate of two to seven days and a CFR, a case fatality rate, somewhat between three to four percent. The severe cases are averaging 15 percent, uh, meaning that 15 percent of all infected individuals are admitted into ICU units. Um, this is a, uh, the architecture of the uh, um, the virus and here below is a the uh, the genomic organization or the uh, architecture of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 genome you can see the uh, the poly uh, the, the the two major open reading frames it is a polycystronic virus it is relatively small uh, so you can see a lot of gene genes are squeezed into a very small uh, genome. Next, I will continue putting it in context. So by November 18th, there is only one treatment, a drug called remdesivir, which is fully approved by the FDA. Uh, it is uh, an antiviral drug. It is introduced intravenously. There is also molnupiravir, which is uh, been highly debated in the recent uh, days. It has been approved by the MHRA, which is the UK equivalent of the FDA. Also lately, Pfizer is seeking approval from the FDA for its uh, Paxlovid. Um, up to now, there are uh, vaccines, uh, eight vaccines which are approved for full use. Um, this is, uh, and much more are in the uh, earlier phases of uh, approval. So by now, there have been 254 million cases and 5 million deaths. With daily increase in numbers, there are, they are expected to reach even higher than this. Um, first, variance classification. There are the variant under investigation, the variants of interests such as the lambda and the mu variants. Uh, we have, uh, they have phenotypically changed compared to uh, the reference isolate, which is in this case Wuhan. They have established uh, or suspected implications on transmissions, uh, diagnostic, therapeutics, or immune escape. They also have displayed evidence which uh, demonstrated that it is a cause of an increased proportion of cases there are also the variants of concern, um, such as the, uh, there are four currently, but, uh, according to the WHO, uh, the alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Uh, they uh, have these uh, attributes in addition to the uh, attributes of the variants uh, of interest, meaning they come only worse. Uh, they have uh, an impact of the, on diagnostic treatments and vaccines. Uh, increased transmissibility, uh, evidence of increased disease severity, and uh, uh, increase. They also uh, escape humoral induced immunity, meaning uh, less uh, neutralizing antibodies. Uh, there are also the variants of uh, high consequences. This is according to the CDC. This is uh, the uh, American uh, point of view. Uh, so the, the variants of high concern uh, have imp uh, impact of, on medical countermeasures. They will have significant re reduction in vaccine eff effectiveness and much more severe clinical disease outcome. Uh, unfortunately, uh, luckily, fortunately, there are none uh, of these uh, right now. What do these variants have in common? So. They all share, they all have faster transmission rates. They all escape from neutralizing antibodies. 
they all have a higher viral load and a possibility that they might be more lethal. Now, there are some COVID-19 dietary recommendations. The WHO nutritional recommendations um, has issued uh, its, uh, lately it, uh, its guide. So it states that healthy uh, that uh, adults should reduce intake of sugary comfort foods and uh, higher uh, high intake of proteins and carbs and including their uh, foods in in their uh, diet foods that contain uh, essential um, uh, vitamins uh, that are uh, very uh, important for the healthy functioning and homeostasis of the immune system such as tryptophan uh, antioxidant beta carotene, vitamin C, D, and E, minerals such as zinc. Um, the Euro European uh, Food Safety Authority uh, also considered six vitamins to be essential for the uh, healthy function in, uh, of the immune system, such as uh, the vitamins D, A, C, folate, B6, B12, and also four minerals such as the zinc, uh, iron, copper, and selenium. So uh, on to our research, uh, enough with the background. Uh, what if some plant-based foods could help in infected uh, COVID-19 patients recover faster or use as prevention? So we begin our research by literature analysis and phytocompound selection with analysis with uh, we scrutinize PubMed published literature in search of uh, viral compounds with uh, inhibitory activities targeted in both uh, SARS and MERS. Uh, so why we have uh, looked for literature with the previous uh, inhibitory compounds of uh, SARS and MERS, uh, this is because uh, they all share a lot in common. Uh, and by that, I mean they are all of the genera of Bira coronaviruses. They all emerge from bats. They all been through spillover events, which let them jump in the species barrier. They are all transmitted to humans from presumed intermediate species, uh, civets and dromedary camels, dromedary camels for MERS and civets, of course, for SARS. They are all viral pathogens causing respiratory syndromes. And they all have a history of outbreaks recorded in the span of 17 years, which is short. So this is uh, the rationale behind uh, the literature uh, analysis. Now I'll go on with the text mining has resulted in the selection of 150 compounds. Uh, uh, from 28 pertinent uh, research article, I will highlight that the uh, research has rendered more than uh, 22 uh, research articles, but the, uh, the scrutiny and the full reading of uh, the manuscripts has resulted in a uh, 150 final yes. We've used selection criteria for this literature analysis. Uh, plant derived nutraceuticals uh, with significant inhibitory activities, according with, with the uh, literature in which it was uh, uh, found. So, optimal IC50 values and much more. Uh, also, inhibitory activities had to be revealed through cell free and cell based cleavage assays. Afterwards, we submitted the phyto compounds to pharmacological studies. Uh, there were 150 uh, submitted to a pharmacological screening, starting with A, a drug likeliness and bioavailability, and afterwards, the toxicity test. So the drug likeliness uh, and bioavailability screening was composed of uh, five major rules, including Lipinski rule of five, Goose, Weber, Egan, and uh, Moegi, and the toxicity we've assessed these uh, phyto uh, compounds, these uh, nutraceuticals, for their AIMS toxicity test. Uh, AIMS is, uh, is 
test to assess the, the mutagenetic uh, activity of compounds, the uh, HRG uh, potassium channel inhibitors, which is important for uh, uh, the healthy functioning of uh, cardiovascular system. And also a hepatotoxicity test. So all molecules positive to uh, these were uh, kept and the molecules uh, positive to uh, these were discarded. So this screening has resulted in the uh, in 27 uh, relevant phyto compounds, which were afterwards submitted to a tennis screening of plant-based foods. So these one, 27 phyto compounds were content checked in food B. Uh, the criteria used was foods with content greater than uh, 0.1 milligram per 100 grams. And this has resulted in only 10 nutraceuticals, which were afterwards submitted to a uh, molecular docking studies. Now for the molecular docking studies, we've uh, uh, submitted them to it, uh, to their respective protein targets. You can see here, uh, we've grouped them according to... Uh, uh, three major uh, groups. There are the structural proteins, the coronaviral proteases, and the uh, proteins of the uh, replicase transcriptase complex. I want also to highlight that uh, the selection of uh, the protein targets is accordingly with the literature in which uh, uh, the phyto compounds were previously found. So uh, it's not a uh, hazard. Yes, so uh, we have the, uh, the, the, in the structural proteins, we have the spike and the open reading frame 3A. So with their respective functions, we determine that the, uh, these are the key resi residues, which were found also in the literature, uh, which confer these functions. So uh, afterwards, uh, protein target structures had to be prepared prior to molecular docking studies. So we've used PIMOL to, to analyze uh, SARS-CoV-2 PDB files, uh, including che che checking for gaps uh, and uh, co-crystallized structures and other heteroatoms that uh, uh, have to be cleaned. So for example, here are some missing residues which have to be filled. So uh, we for that, we've used SUS model Swiss model was used to um, fix and uh, these uh, PDB, these uh, protein structures. Afterwards, we've uh, used UCSF Chimera for uh, cleaning of uh, water molecules and other uh, heads or ions, which uh, might jeopardize the molecular ducking uh, results. We've also used Cavity Plus to check for uh, optimal uh, docking cavities. Uh, so uh, this was used only to confirm since uh, all the, um, all our binding ca cavities were, uh, were used according to the literature. So it only came as a check. Uh -huh. Now uh, on to actual molecular docking. We've used Autodoc Vina built in PYRX. Vina uses a sophisticated graded uh, optimization method. It's also known as the uh, genetic algorithm in its local optimization procedure. So the, here in the uh, grid box, to the parameters, which uh, you have to set prior to mole your uh, molecular docking studies, you have to uh, enter the box dimensions and the Cartesian coordinates. So the grid box center was found using PyMol, which I've uh, discussed priorly. And here, here for example, we've used the, uh, here, here is the uh, grid box center and the XYZ coordinates of the 3CL Pro uh, cysteine histidine uh, catalytic diode. So for example, we've generated these, um, these uh, Cartesian coordinates, which will determine where this grid box will uh, use its uh, uh, simulation. And uh, this is mainly used to uh, optimize the CPU energy and uh, efficiency. 
Now, what I want to highlight this uh, uh, prior to the, there were a, there was a problem prior to this, and it w the w it was the uh, I'm sorry the came out of uh, SARS-CoV-2 variants. So uh, our research required an update to be in line with the. Uh, the uh, new variants, so a lot of mutations have randomly appeared, and they this needed modeling. So we, for example, here are the uh, uh, mutations which uh, we modeled. Uh, this is regarding the alpha variant, the beta, and the gamma. So all these mutations were modeled, and. Uh, Developed using Swiss model by taking uh, atomic coordinates and their uh, PDBs as a template on the basis of their corresponding mutations. So uh, all the models which I've showed you previously were modeled following this procedure. I'll, I'll also highlight that side chains were mutated in CUT using uh, rotomers that uh, represent a local energy minimum of torsional angles. Um, so here are the Biden affinities, which uh, we've, uh, we've uh, come up uh, across. And you can see they range between, uh, they go as high as uh, seven point, negative 7.5, which is uh, somewhat very uh, respectable. So all these uh, uh, Biden affinities can be in interpreted as a, uh, a target uh, against all these uh, uh, functions which uh, we've uh, uh, targeted in the grid box setting. So, uh, for example, uh, quercetine will uh, target the uh, ACE2 uh, attachment since it is uh, targeting the spike protein receptor binding domain. Uh, this is just an example. Now, this is a sort of a graphical summary of our research. Um, uh, it's, I've also generated uh, using the uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, genome organization. So all the pro the proteins that were targeted uh, are uh, are shown here. So if we have the the two major uh, coronaviral proteases, the uh, the replication transcriptase complex, mainly represented by the uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase and the helicase. And also the structural proteins, mainly the, the spike uh, protein and the open reading frame 3A, uh, which is also an ion channel. So these are the phytocompounds which uh, I've uh, displayed in the slide before. Uh, and uh, they might uh, inhibit somewhat a, uh, these functions. Now on to molecular docking results visualization. We've used two programs. First, the uh, we've generated a 2D diagrams uh, uh, using LickPlot Plus. It uh, it shows the H bonds and uh, their length, and also the hydrophobic uh, interactions, which will be depicted by uh, uh, red circles, uh, half dashed uh, circles. We've also used Chimera for the 3D representation. Uh, th this is an example. Uh, for example, the forscrolene and the helicase. It has generated the negative 7.5 kilocalories per mole, which is uh, somewhere very good by the affinity. And you can see here, for example, A. Here are the uh, the 2D diagram. Here is the 2D diagram. This is the ligand. You can see that. Uh, uh, it has somewhat uh, good uh, binding uh, interactions with the the, uh, the residues of the of the the protein. And uh, here are for some hydrophobic interactions, which is uh, good. This is all for the sake to induce uh, some sort of a molecular distortion that uh, might inhibit. Uh, the uh, the targeted viral structures and this is b just a uh, uh, a look to, to have a glimpse at, uh, at the pose of the uh, the ligand within the binding cavity afterwards we've uh, we've uh, 
we wanted to find the uh, the, the protein pathways that are uh, related to the, the these phyto compounds. So we we started by the protein target fishing using Swiss target prediction and the uh, similarity ensemble uh, approach SEA. We used criteria uh, of a target possibility and max TC greater than uh, 0 0.9. Uh, afterwards, we submitted all the targets that which we've gathered to uh, network pharmacology analysis using string software, which is a tool used to perform uh, a protein-protein interaction uh, PPI analysis and pathway enrichment. Um, also, KEG uh, with a Keg pathways were enriched with a p-value greater than less than uh, 0 0.01 by the input. Uh, they were downloaded afterwards, and this is an example of the uh, uh, the figures uh, we've generated. We, we've generated ten according to uh, the ten nutraceuticals which uh, we've had. So, for example, uh, here is here is the uh, Keg pathway enrichment of the quercetin. Um, for example, we have IL-17 signaling pathway, which is uh, uh, very relevant in the uh, the COVID-19 physiopathology. We have the hypoxia inducible factor one, the signaling pathway, which is uh, very important uh, in hypoxia. Hypoxia is also a highlight, uh, one of the highlights of the COVID-19. In uh, physiopathology, we've also have uh, nitrogen metabolism. Nitrogen metabolism is, uh, uh, i.e., the uh, nitric oxide. So uh, nitric oxide is a potent uh, vasodilator in uh, in lungs. It's all. It is also relevant, highly relevant in uh, the COVID nineteen physiopathology, and this is uh, expected, unsurprisingly. I will not go into the full. Uh, uh, phyto compounds since uh, into the full uh, enriched pathway since there are many but uh, yeah that's it also uh, i will say sorry the time two minutes left okay two minutes okay okay by two minutes i'll be over uh, so here are some uh, best plant-based food source uh we have um, here all the 10 uh, phyto compounds so we've used a uh, selection criteria more than 250 plant-based foods were found in the 10 nutraceuticals in 10 or greater than 0 0.1 and here are the best ranking phyto compounds you can see here for epigenin we have uh, uh, parsley which has uh, an average in 1262 milligrams this is uh, for, for an example only. So what's next? We plan another manuscript on the effect of phytoncides on COVID-19 physiopathology. Phytoncides are these uh, uh, volatile organic molecules which are excreted by trees. Uh, and they have also uh, uh, been uh, documented to increase the, uh, the for example, the uh, NK cell activity and many other important proteins so thank you for uh, your attention for further details you can uh, feel free to contact me thank you uh thank you very much Ibrahim. um i think that uh, <clears throat> even if we are running a little bit on time uh, for dinner uh, maybe it will be interesting to uh, perform some short debate or answer some little questions that we have uh, remaining from the two previous, well, two, the four previous uh, presentations. Uh, feel free to, to make your questions through the panels, either uh, through the um, chat on WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp sorry, <laughs> on Meet or in the um, YouTube questions and on the meantime I'm collecting the ones from the last two sessions. Uh, I have some uh, for a uh, previous session of professors Meshishi and um, 
Jawadi, and I apologize for the pronunciation again of the French uh, Arabian uh, names. And both are related with the same. Looks like peroxidases and lacases from fungi are better than those from bacteria. Uh, is it uh, something biased by chemical uh, traditional analysis or just, uh, let's say, a reality due to, to the fact that uh, fungi produces more active and uh, efficient uh, laca lacases and peroxidases? So either uh, Professor Jawadi or Meshishi can answer the question. Feel free. So, uh, okay, I, I will answer the part linked to the lacases. Uh, um, cases are, um, um, let's say, in fungi, in bacteria, they have different um, roles, physiological, structural roles. That's why they have these different uh, activities. So, for example, in in, uh, in archaea, you will have a very uh, thermostable lacases. However, in in uh, fungi, you will find the uh, label uh, uh, lacases, uh, label lacases that could be, um, however, the, uh, the activity may be, may be different. You have uh, active lacases, they are produced in huge amount in fungi than in bacteria. This is maybe some differences the... and and for the peroxidases professor jawadi uh, your audio for the peroxidases uh... Fungal, uh, especially white roid fungi, are the best producer of a uh, great amount of uh, 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 oxidative enzymes, such as oxidases and uh, lacases. Uh, especially for the, uh, the uh, we talk about the application of these peroxidases uh, for the biomass, linocellulosic biomass, only white roid fungi. Uh, peroxidases are the best hydrolyzer for this uh, uh, biomass, recalcitrant biomass. However, we never uh, talk about peroxidases from bacteria to uh, hydrolyze lignin. It is uh, uh, not possible uh, to, uh, this ability is only uh, restricted for a white roid fungi to uh, hydrolyze linocellulosic uh, uh, biomass. Uh, however, uh, other uh, peroxidases from, for example, plant also, they can uh, be used uh, for decolorizing uh, the uh, uh, many uh, of uh, synthetic dyes, uh, etc. Okay, uh, thank you very much. There is uh, another question. Uh, this time is regarded to the last uh, presentation of Ibrahim Belli, which is uh, proposed by someone. Sorry, I don't know if it's a man or. <laughs> it's female. Mona. Uh, yeah, it's Mona Fedjui uh, that says what the interest of vitamin E in the prevention against uh, COVID-19. Thanks. Yes, so I'll take it. So not only vitamin E, but vitamin A to E highlighted potentially beneficial roles uh, in the fight against COVID via antioxidant effects. 
mainly. Okay. And uh, also uh, immunomodulation enhancing also natural barriers, uh, local paracrine signaling, for example. Uh, this is in the context of COVID-19, but also in the immune response. Uh, vitamin E is a lipid-soluble antioxidant, which uh, may improve immune cell function and uh, also prevent cellular damage. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, yeah, it, it has its its um, clear correlation. Uh, thank you, Ibrahim. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> since looks like there's no more questions, and for you it's midday, so it in time. I uh, just uh, following yeah. advices of um, ah wait, uh, Professor Mashishi has raised the hand, wants to say something, and Amina Muftak also. So wait a second, everybody. So, uh, Professor uh, Meshishi. Just, just have two small questions. One for you, Mark. And uh, um, what is the best expression system for production of metabolites? So far, um, you discussed bacteria, yep. plants, etc. And the second question is for uh, Dr. Akmusi and about the, the tannase. Uh, since tannase are uh, esterases, they 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 don't they don't break down the phenolic compounds. That's how these uh, enzymes were involved in the in the reduction of the uh, the uh, the tannase uh, the phenolic compounds in olive meal wastewater. So, if uh, Mademoiselle uh, Agmuzi uh, is there, I will left first of all to, uh, to to her to answer the the question. And if not, is there? I will take the one from from my side. Well. Five seconds later, I take the, the, the question from my side. I should say that um, uh, I, I'm not considering myself an expert in biotech, first of all, but uh, for sure, bacteria or yeast has more uh, possibilities and capabilities due to the growing capacity and the, produ like the capacity of produce higher amounts in small spaces and we can produce a higher N, so higher cell numbers that indirectly is correlated with a higher production rate. So if I have to beat and to put some money on the table, I will put always first on yeast and then in bacteria, then rather for plants itself. But it's true that uh, saying people, uh, if you eat this small powder of bacteria, it's equivalent to eat like 10 kilos of potatoes, I do not know if people will buy it, but right now uh, uh, maybe it's the, the way to produce the enzyme to modify or to produce to know which genes can be can be introduced and modify it in a safe and, and healthy manner on plants to say they, later on yes this potato and this is a potato it's healthy and, and uh, suitable for for the world and for us. Uh, on the meantime, we take the question of uh, Madame Muftak. Vamos a the audio. J'ai une question à Madame Akmosi Tuni, mais je pense qu'elle est absente. Ok. Non, elle vient de nous rejoindre. Elle vient de l'air elle, 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 mmh. elle, elle est revenue, elle est revenue normalement. D'accord. Donc, Madame Akmoussitoumi, euh, si vous m'entendez, vous, vous avez travaillé sur les hydrolases à l'eau thermophile. Et vous dites que les tanases sont utilisés dans les margines euh, donc pour euh, une remédiation. Ma question est la suivante. Vous avez dit que euh, ces tannases qui ont été extraites à partir des arcées, 
de la souche que vous avez, tra travaillé, euh, vous avez tra travaillé sur, sur, sur la souche que vous avez travaillé. Donc, il n'y a pas une, euh, une dépollution, il y a une, une absorption, euh, donc une dépollution significative des métaux lourds. C'est ça. C'est ce qu'elle a, ce qu a dit, madame euh, Atmosi. Est-ce qu'il y, y, y a des expériences où nous pouvons utiliser les phanases pour des raisons de, de, une désalinisation des terres agricoles, étant donné que les engrais chimiques, ce sont des facteurs secondaires de désalinisation secondaire. C'est ça, ça ma question. Merci. Donc, euh, oui, je suis là, je suis de retour, donc vous m'excusez, hein. je suis absente pour la plus longtemps. Donc, euh, Madame euh, Moufou, je n'ai pas bien saisi votre question. Donc, par rapport au Tanaz, euh, ce que vous venez de dire. Oui, par rapport au Tanaz. Donc, euh, je vous dis, Madame, que les Tanaz, vous, euh, vous avez extraire euh, les hydrolases, les Tanaz, à partir des, des archives. Donc, oui. c'est votre axe de recherche. Et vous avez utilisé les Tanaz euh, pour euh, remédier les margines, c'est ça C'est ça. Margines. Donc, euh, donc euh, mon axe de recherche, mon acte de recherche, c'est la recherche des hydrolases à partir, c'est d'extraire des hydrolases à partir du parquet à euh, À partir du parquet. Oui. Entre autres, moi j'ai travaillé sur les lipases. Entre autres, pour justement appliquer euh, les lipases qui ont été isolées, nous avons opté pour la remédiation justement des margines, parce que les margines c'est un déchet qui est très toxique et surtout qui n'est pas un, qui n'est pas qui est rejeté dans la nature et il n'est pas valorisé. Donc justement pour valoriser ce déchet, qu'est-ce que nous avons fait Nous avons nous avons cultivé notre souche à partir de ce souche en l'utilisant comme milieu de culture. Et nous avons cultivé, de par de par la production des lipases, il y a eu la production des tanins. Et nous avons remarqué aussi que par la production de ces enzymes, nous avons remarqué qu'il y a eu une décoloration qui est très signifiant euh, par rapport aux margines, qui était de couleur euh, marron rouge, qui est devenue transparent, comme vous l'avez vu à travers mes diapos. Donc, nous avons fait oui. les enzymes tanas qui a été produite euh, pour euh, justement contribuer à la biodégradation de ce déchet. Euh, de part aussi la production aussi des lipas, parce que n'oubliez pas aussi que les margines, c'est un, un déchet qui contient beaucoup de composés organiques, des polyphénols ainsi que des acides gras. Pardon, voilà. madame, une petite question. Est-ce que les tanas euh, sont utilisés pour une euh, dépollution euh, des, des, des minéraux, des, des, des métaux lourds et où pour une désalinisation de ces sols bah, Franchement, je n'ai pas d'idée euh, par rapport à, aux, aux terres agricoles. Moi, je travaille uniquement sur euh, les écosystèmes salins euh, aquatiques. Donc, euh, ce qui oui, concerne... même pour les, systèmes, euh, euh, les écosystèmes aquatiques, mmh. est-ce qu'ils sont utilisés pour la salinisation de ces écosystèmes ben non, comme je viens de dire tout à l'heure, c'est des études qui restent à, à l'échelle laboratoire. Jusqu'à maintenant, il y a peu, peu d'enzymes qui sont isolées à partir d'arquées, euh, que ce soit allophiles ou autres, qui sont appliquées euh, à l'échelle euh, industrielle ou à l'échelle euh, sur terrain. Voilà. Merci beaucoup, madame. Merci, Merci à vous. Merci. Mm. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to cut the interesting uh, debate or exchange of questions and answers, but uh, since uh, some of uh, the uh, audience and the speakers should uh, move uh, to take uh, yeah, the desired uh, food carbon source, maybe also a source of water to rehydrate ourselves, and considering that at one you have or we all have an intense afternoon. Uh, I should recommend everybody to, to take a, the break for lunch, and we hope to meet you all at one. I would like to thank, and in a normal way, I will ask for a clap or two claps or three claps of hands to everybody uh, that attend the meeting in the morning sessions, for the speakers and also the uh, audience and the organizing committee for the work and the effort. And yes, I hope to meet you all after this afternoon. 
and thank you, thank you all for everything. Et si c'est nécessaire, je peux répéter tout en français, mais alors on ira manger un peu plus tard. Donc, euh, dommage, on le laisse ça pour la prochaine fois présentiellement en Algérie, en, en Tunisie. En Tunisie pardon. Euh, je serai très heureux de vous rejoindre à tous la prochaine fois. Euh, je m'excuse parce que cet après-midi, je dois donner TP de 1h30 jusqu'à 19h30. Euh, donc, je ne serai pas là, mais s'il y a quelques questions de plus ou besoin de n'importe quoi, vous avez tous mon adresse mail sous la présentation et sinon, Inesrine Lanchi sera très heureux de vous partager cette info. Alors, merci. Merci Marc. Moi, je te remercie pour euh, modérer cette session. Donc voilà, nous arrivons à la fin. On est à la fin de cette session euh, plénière. Donc euh, je tiens vraiment à remercier tous les participants euh, qui étaient avec nous aujourd'hui et un, un merci particulier à nos chers conférenciers qui, ont fait, qui nous ont fait l'honneur d'être là parmi nous, notamment professeur Djouedi, professeur Mchichi, euh, docteur Marc Ilros, docteur euh, Akmouti et euh, Mr. Belhi. Donc, je vous remercie vraiment pour vos efforts, pour être là aujourd'hui avec nous. On a beaucoup appris avec vous. Euh, C'était un plaisir. J'espère que cette session, vraiment, c'est-à-dire, on tirera beaucoup de... Euh, dans, en plus des connaissances, c'est-à-dire, tisser des liens. Et en fait, c'est le but. Euh, c'est vraiment le but de ces séminaires, c'est tisser des liens entre nous déjà, entre aussi avec, euh, avec nos amis tunisiens, espagnols, euh, belges, etc. Donc, euh, voilà, j'espère que cette, cette matinée était bénéfique pour tout le monde, donc aussi bien les, 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 les enseignants-chercheurs que nos étudiants. Donc, euh, voilà, je vous remercie. Et puis, euh, je tiens juste, s'il vous plaît, à rappeler qu'après cette session, c'est-à-dire les sessions, euh, il y aura des sessions parallèles à partir de 13 heures après euh, la pause déjeuner. Donc, alors, on aura six sessions qui vont se faire parallèlement. Donc, normalement, on est de 13 heures à 16h30 avec les e-posters et les communications. À la fin de ça, donc, on va encore se rejoindre à, vers 16h45 ou 17h pour, une, pour clôturer euh, ce séminaire. Voilà, merci encore. Euh, et puis, euh, voilà, bon appétit à tous. Et on se revoit à 13h. Voilà, merci. Merci, merci au, au, revoir. au revoir. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. <rire> merci. Au revoir. Merci à vous.